Hello, viewer. After my last video, it was brought to my attention that I need to take a quick disclamatory precaution here, as my channel doesn't always receive the demographic traffic I'm expecting. I know this video's title is a little broad, so I want to let you know that this is not an entry-level Resident Evil video. If you came here thinking it would be a crash course on all things RE, I sincerely appreciate you stopping by, but this video may not be for you, okay? If this is somehow the very first RE video you've ever clicked on, and you've never even heard of Jill Valentine, and just decided to click on it for some reason, then I'm, I'm telling you in advance, it may not be for you. Resident Evil is a long-running series with many characters and a lot of plot and lore, and this video assumes a lot of prior knowledge that I'm not going to be explaining at length or we'd literally be here for three or four hours. I don't know how much clearer I can make myself on this. Okay, so here's a weird one. I recently saw the trailer for Resident Evil Death Island. It looks really cool. I personally wish it was an actual game. <coughs> Revelations 3. <coughs> but it got me thinking more deeply about an idea that I had been loosely kicking around in the back of my mind for a while. Resident Evil is in an interesting place right now because there are kind of two slightly different variants of its characters existing simultaneously, but they're being framed as the same person. It's really uncanny and weird. I titled this video, The Strange State of Jill Valentine, because she was the first character who I noticed this phenomenon with, and I'll go into why that is in a bit, but she is by no means the only character that this applies to. To explain what I'm talking about, though, we need to go back in time a bit. The very first high-profile remake of a Resident Evil game was the now definitive version of Resident Evil 1. This was released a long time before the more recent modernizations of RE2, 3, and 4, and as a result, its character designs, as well as their tone and writing, were much closer to those of their original incarnations. They're not exactly as they were before, and some characters, like Chris Redfield, would go on to grow further, in more ways than one, but overall, Resident Evil 1 Remake feels completely authentic to the Resident Evil universe as it was established in the releases predating it. Enough so that it effectively feels like a true replacement for the original title, for all intents and purposes. Now, let's fast forward a bit to Resident Evil 5. Hot take, I really like this one, and not just because it gave us the boulder punching meme. RE5 plays very similarly to RE4, but actually ties into the series' overarching narrative and concludes Albert Wesker's character arc. I miss him dearly, even to this day, but I was very satisfied with the note he went out on. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. RE5 is significant to this discussion because it was the first appearance of what I like to think of as modern Chris and the last chronological appearance of Jill Valentine before her re-emergence in the upcoming Death Island. Before Resident Evil 3 Remake, the last time we had seen Jill was in the first Revelations title, which is old at this point. Revelations actually takes place slightly before RE5, but it released close enough to 5 and 6, and long enough before the remake of RE2, that despite replacing her voice actress and face model, she still feels like the same character to me as the one from the games whose releases preceded it. I'm gonna call this variant Original Jill. Original Jill isn't necessarily the most complex and well-written character of all time, but she has some very distinct and consistent traits. Obviously, she's gorgeous and a total badass, but her portrayal in terms of her vocal performance, her choice of words, and even her body language to a degree emanate a certain warmth and this almost gentle quality. This characteristic emanates off her very strongly. It's unmistakable, in my opinion. It's a very Eastern thing, to be sure, and in some ways, maybe one of the biggest giveaways that she was created by a Japanese dude, but it's a fundamental part of Original Jill. When you have a chance, replay or rewatch Resident Evil 1 Remake, Umbrella Chronicles 1, RE5, or even Revelations 1. I think you'll see what I mean. Her variant in Resident Evil 3 Remake, however, feels like a completely different character to me, but her look, 
while clearly inspired by the game it's a recreation of, is equally distinct, which I actually like. It makes it less off-putting when she opens her mouth and starts spouting cuss words. The thing about New Jill, I'm calling this variant New Jill, is that she's a much harsher character. She yells more, she swears more, she goads her enemies more. To be clear, I don't mean to imply that anything about this interpretation of her is objectively worse or less valid. Her actress is great, the performance is very raw, I'm not complaining about the changes themselves. But she feels like a fundamentally different person to me than the warm, oddly motherly variant seen in original Jill. But ever since RE3 Remake released, and Capcom staunchly refused to give Jill so much as a cameo in the Ethan Winters saga of RE7 and 8, I've been wondering how she was going to be handled going forward. And with the release of the trailer for Death Island, I think I finally got my answer, and it's exactly what I feared it would be. This is Jill's latest chronological appearance in the series. It is by far the farthest forward in time we have ever seen her, and everything from her look to her voice to her demeanor seems to be based on new Jill. Now again, this isn't necessarily a problem, but it does create an almost unprecedented situation. It seems to me that Capcom has decided that its latest remakes are meant to act as RE1 remake level replacements to their original counterparts, despite being substantially different in a number of areas. RE1 Remake was extremely faithful to the game it was recreating, from its map to its mechanics to its intended tone, but the RE2, 3, and 4 remakes are not. They're great modernizations, well, RE2 and 4 remakes are great modernizations, but they are not good replacements for their original counterparts in pretty much any department. 4 comes the closest, in my opinion, but still doesn't quite make the cut as an out-and-out -out replacement. We've already discussed Jill, but I want to take a look at Leon, Ada, and Claire as well. Leon gets very close to feeling like the same person, but not 100%. His portrayal in RE2 Remake feels faithful to who he was during the events of Raccoon City, but by 4 Remake, things have changed a little again. Now, in the remake's defense, everything they did with him makes complete sense, because it matches the tone that the remake is going for. It is darker, it is a little more serious, and it isn't trying to be completely campy. Leon still quips, but it feels like these lines are there more out of obligation than anything else, and their delivery is more grounded and less snarky. Again, this isn't a knock against the actor. The deliveries are perfectly organic and tonally appropriate. I would even argue it's objectively better written because it's more tonally consistent with the Resident Evil universe at large, in a way that the original RE4 simply wasn't, for better and worse. My feelings about Ada are largely the same as my feelings about Leon. Everything the remakes did with her makes complete sense, and lord knows she's dressed more sensibly for her mission in 4 Remake than the over-the-top party dress she wears in the original, but she is somewhat drier and more serious in the remakes. Original Ada had this fun, flirty quality, and I hate to bring this up again, but like with original Jill, she had these sort of gentle eyes. They almost sparkled when she spoke, and her voice direction was completely different. She was much more flirty, and when she squared off with Leon, it genuinely felt like a dance. I have no explicit problem with new Ada, but God, I loved original Ada in a way she's just never going to emulate. They are not the same person to me. Lastly, let's take a look at Claire, who in my opinion has experienced changes just as stark as those of Jill. Original Claire, the character you see in games like 2, Code Veronica, and Umbrella Chronicles 2, also has a very distinct personality. She's sassy, she's cool under pressure, she exudes boundless confidence, and this last thing is more subtle, but there's an almost sharp undertone whenever she speaks. And, you guessed it, very few of these traits are present in New Claire, the variant seen in RE2 Remake. Claire's a strange case because there's kind of three variants of her. There was a one-off variant in Revelations 2 I call Cardboard Claire, but she at least maintained that air of endless independence, I guess. New Claire, though, the one in RE2 Remake, has more of this innocent schoolgirl vibe, for lack of a better term. She still knows her way around a gun, but I don't know, she has a more apprehensive aura to me somehow. 
She has this awkward schoolgirl crush on Leon, maybe, uh, but more importantly, she just doesn't bring that sharp sass. And I just can't imagine New Claire enacting the opening scene from Code Veronica. It just doesn't feel in character for her somehow. And if she actually made it to Rockford Island somehow, I feel like she'd immediately take pity on Steve, rather than being totally annoyed by him. Okay, so to bring this back to best girl Jill, while I'm thrilled that she's finally being brought back into the spotlight, and Death Island seems like it's going to explore her psychological state post RE5 after 14 real world years. My very first thought upon seeing the trailer was, okay, but why does she look like that? I wasn't surprised in the traditional sense to see her remake design. It makes sense from a marketing standpoint or whatever, but it doesn't make sense from a narrative standpoint. First of all, she sticks out like a sore thumb, because everyone else in the trailer has their original variant designs. Leon has the grizzled RE6 look, not the new baby-faced one. Claire has her sharper original features and even voice quality, not the baby-faced uh, new ones. Furthermore, even if you want me to believe that new Jill is the same person as original Jill, which I don't believe, by the way, why does she look exactly the way she does in RE3 Remake? Why is her hair back to the original styling? Older Jill had a ponytail. Why isn't it blonde? She didn't dye it in RE5, it became blonde due to Wesker's experiments on her. I know this is stupid, but it's a thing, look it up. And most importantly, why is she in her fucking civvies again? She only wore that in RE3 because she was caught off guard, off the clock. Why is she going on missions with fully geared up Chris and company in her fucking blue tank top? Is it because she wears it in all her most recent promotional art? Capcom, is, is that why? And look, I know Claire is in the red jacket, but at least she consistently makes it a point to wear some sort of red top. Unlike Jill, who has historically always dressed appropriately for the given mission. This has to be one of the stupidest and most niche videos I've ever made, but there you go. Resident Evil is in a really weird place right now. Its canon feels like two separate realities in flux over each other, but Capcom is acting like it's all one timeline. Honestly, I have no real problem with the reboot, but I wish it was being more explicitly acknowledged as such. There's nothing wrong with the new takes on the characters, but I feel like Capcom is treating these distinct variants interchangeably. The games are still great, and they're still selling well. Overall, the franchise is in great shape, but it's different. These characters are not the same as each other. Does anyone agree? Disagree? Please let me know in the comments because I'm genuinely curious, and if you look at any of my other videos, you'll see that I actually do engage with my audience. Alright, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, also, fuck you for changing Wesker's voice, Capcom. This is unacceptable. Wesker must talk through his nose. It's a rule. He has, like, a sinus problem or something. This is canon. I'm not making it up.